Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, powered by the Retirement Income Store and brought to you by Adjami Financial Strategies in Guilford, Connecticut and Denver, Colorado. It's actually becoming a moral hazard where advisors and individual investors are going further and further out on the risk curve because they're saying there's no alternative. They're, they're taking on risk that they don't need to just so they can either keep their jobs because people are fear of missing out or because that's what everyone else is doing. So I have to do it as well. I hear it all the time, Daniel, either on the phone or people coming in that they're saying, there's no alternative. What do you got for me? How can you do things differently, Andrew? And that's where Tina is a liar. I'm going to talk about that today on our radio show. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies. Dad, you know, this, is, this has become a serious thing where bonds are paying nothing, right? And pension plans are, are, having, are having this trouble where their mandates are to make 8%. Yeah. And they have a, a, 40, a 60-40 portfolio, right? 60% in stocks. 40 in bonds. And, and if the U.S. Treasury is, is paying like one and a half, 1.4 percent, it's pretty on 40 percent of your money. It's, it's near impossible to hit those 8 percent mandates. Right. And so everyone is kind of saying, well, I realize that, you know, housing is expensive. I realize that markets are expensive. By every evaluation, markets are in U.S. markets are the most expensive they've ever been. Right. Yeah. Right around that tech bubble area. It's very close to where they were in 2000. But what else am I going to do? Yeah. Well, there's, there are alternatives. People think there are no alternatives, but there are alternatives. And that's where the lie comes in when people think and there aren't alternatives. And we're constantly talking about that on the show, about how there are alternatives. And you know, today, you know, as we talk, let's go into how these things exactly work and, you know, what's involved with these things so that people don't have to invest for hope, but they can invest for on purpose. They can invest with, with knowing that they're going to get paid. You know, um, uh, definition of an investment is it's got to pay you to own it. And that's what we're talking about. So, you know, when people retire, Say that again, because I think that's really important. Well, the definition of an investment is it's got to pay you in order to own it. So it, you know, just because an investment is going, you know, from maybe ten dollars a share to eleven dollars a share to thirteen dollars a share, that doesn't necessarily mean it's paying you like if you invest ten thousand dollars and it's paying you five hundred dollars every year, that's paying you interest and dividends, right? When people retire, um, it's not that they need a million, $2 million, whatever it is, they need income off of that. They need a new paycheck. So instead of their employer paying them, their investments need to pay them. And that's what a true investment is. It's going to pay you to own it. And that's the alternative investments that pay you to own them, right? But when you're just investing for growth, they're not paying you. The only time you get paid is if you sell it and if you sell it for more than what you paid for it. So that, like a real estate example would be if you bought, if you bought a, a $5 million you know, penthouse in LA and you hoped that you could sell it in three years for, for $10 million compared to you go buy an $80,000 house in Ohio and you rent it out and collect eight hundred dollars a month in rent right one is one is a hope or a speculation and yeah. one i mean eight, who, who doesn't want another eight hundred dollars a month of income yeah that's a great example daniel and you know many times people have at least in the past maybe not as much anymore although there are some people still doing this buying raw land with the idea that it's going to be worth more in the future. And generally speaking, it is if you give it enough in the future, ten decades in the future, generally speaking, right? But, uh, or if you, if you have a certain end, that kind of thing. But that is, again, speculation. And you have to pay the taxes on the land, you, you know, before you get anything. So it's not paying you until you actually sell it. And, you know, so you have to sell it high. 
But there are like that house that's a great example, Daniel. A house in Ohio, you pay 80 grand for it, it's paying you eight hundred dollars a month. That's a phenomenal return on on your investment from that standpoint. And it's paying you. And then eventually at some point, maybe you end up selling that house and maybe it will be worth 125 or 200,000 by the time decades down the road, you sell that house, but you've collected all those paychecks in the meantime. And that's where we're always talking to people about how we need to make sure that, you know, we want your money working for you. Sit. We don't want your money sitting on the beach, sipping pina coladas. We want it working in a sweat factory for you, right? And that's the idea of that house in Ohio that you're giving that example of, Daniel. And, you know, there are a lot of other things. And, um, you know, you know, from that aspect, there's a universe of income generating investments that are available. And, and if you just tuned in, you're listening to Financial Strategies, Andrew Daniel Adjmi, today's topic is Tina is a liar. And we're talking about alternatives to be able to be able to get income for you and um, and and be able to make money for you and be able to be paid by your investments. And uh, we have a paper that you can have by calling 800 725 Seven six one six. The paper is Universe of Income Generating Investments, and uh, we're going to be we're talking about that today and how those things actually work. Uh, Daniel, um, you know, you want to start talking about how those things are are working, or uh, do you have another thing that you want to say before we get delve into that? Well, yeah, I, th- I think we should go through, and, and we, obviously, we're not going to go through every alternative today, but there are alternatives, and I, maybe if we go through you know, five of them or so, Yeah. Uh, give people some ideas, starting with some of the more aggressive ones down to the more conservative things. Yeah. And again, these are, these are all things that pay you. So you could go out and buy these yourselves and build a portfolio that will pay you. You can hire somebody to do it, but we want to give you the ideas on what's possible. So you can start investigating, asking the questions and learning about these, just like hopefully you wouldn't go buy real estate just because you heard real estate always goes up. So I should go buy real estate. (laughs) You would, you would look and you'd say, well, this, my, you know, return on investment is going to be X and this, it's going to be X. This is a speculation. This is going to pay me while I wait for it to appreciate and and make an educated decision. That's what we want to help you do with these investments because um, I was talking about the moral hazard, right? And it's a huge thing. Advisors don't want to get fired. And so they're taking your money and they're putting it at risk. That's the moral hazard part because they need to keep up with indexes so that they don't get fired. And if it goes the wrong way, if the madness doesn't continue on, they don't lose anything. You're the one who loses something, but they're the ones who are saying, well, there's no alternative. So we have to put you in these riskier things. Yeah. And so that's why we want to cover there's, there's alternatives. Yeah. yeah. And Daniel, you know, that's a good point. When you talk about that, you know, you know what happens when people, um, you, you know, so these advisors are putting their people's money at risk and then, and then the, you know, things fall apart and their clients lose money. And you know what that, you know what the client's, that these the, these investors typically say when that happens, they don't say, oh, my advisor treated me badly, or they don't say, oh, I invested foolishly. That they say is, well, everybody's losing money. But that's not or the case, the right? That's are rigged. Yeah. You know, that's where Tina is a liar, right? There is no alternative is a liar. When the markets come down and when their investments come down, Tina's a liar then too. That is not everybody loses money, right? We, we know we have lots of people that have not lost money when others have lost money. So the, 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 that's what we need to educate people on, I would say, Daniel. And that's a great thing that you're talking about. Let's, let's talk about some of these things. And, and you know, one of the problems, one, one of the things that's so significant here uh, when we're talking about these alternatives that people have other than the stock market is because of monetary debasement. And, you know, our country is one of the biggest countries, you know, that that is debasing money and and that money is uh, falling apart on. And that's where if we're if we're using some of these alternatives, we're going to be able to be prepared for that. We are prepared for inflation. We can be prepared for a market drop. We can be prepared for the market increase. Right. If we do this in a proper fashion, not buying 
one of these investments alone or one type of these investments, but putting them all together. That's what we're talking about. We want to help you and our listening audience understand how these things work together. And that's what this is about. Right, Daniel? Exactly. That's that's perfectly um, describing what we want to help people achieve because there is an al- there are alternatives and you need that diversification between the different asset allocations more so than uh, you know either i'm going to go all stocks or i'm going to go all cash or i'm going to do you know the standard portfolio of you know the the 60 40 portfolio right 60 uh, stock 40 bonds right yeah yeah, yeah. so so the, the 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 first the first um, alternative is is probably the riskiest on the spectrum that we want to talk about, and when I say riskiest, it still is an investment. Why is it still an investment? Because it's paying you to own it, right? So when I say risk, I'm just talking about volatility. It's the most volatile, right? It still has contracts associated with it. Um, and it's still going to pay you as the owner of the investment to own it. And so volatility, we did a show about this. It can actually help you out because it allows you to have opportunities where you can buy the same asset at a lower price um, and then get appreciation. But if you don't, if you're not wanting to do that, that's fine too, because you're sitting there and it's paying you. Sometimes these things pay monthly. Sometimes these things pay quarterly. And then they like to give out special dividends as well. So you said it's more, it's, it's, uh, it's something like it's the most volatile or it's more volatile or something like that. But in, in these investments that we're talking about it's the uh, uh, and what the alternatives that we have available, this one is the most volatile of these ones that we're having available. There's other ones, other kinds of uh, uh, things that you can put your money into out there in the stock market and speculation, things that are more volatile or can be more volatile. But just in, in our lineup, this is the most volatile in our lineup, right? It, uh, and uh, so anyway, um, with that, I want to let you know and remind you, we're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajme. Today's uh, topic is Tina is a liar. There is no alternative it is is a lie, uh, and we're giving away a book. Uh, if you're if you'd like to get this, called Return on Principle, that will be able to help you understand some things in regard to what we're talking about and and play upon um, this, give you a little bit more in depth uh, in, uh, thought process with what we're dealing with today. Um, we're going to need to take a break. We're going to come back and talk about um, those alternatives and that one that Daniel started to to uh, talk about. What that's paying you, um, paying you all along the way. Um, and we'll be uh, right back after this. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. So I want you to imagine that you're a business owner. Maybe you are a business owner and you can really relate to this. Dad, you, you're a serial entrepreneur. You're going to relate to this. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're building a business. Let's say it's an autonomous car company, okay? And you say yeah. one of the leading causes of death in the world is car accidents. So you want to create an, uh, an autonomous vehicle that will drive people to where they get to go so they can reclaim some of their time, right? They can, they can spend time with the family. They can do work. They can do whatever they want while they're driving, not have to worry about traffic. Not have, and the car will get them from place A to place B without an accident. Right. And so you're spending all your time on this and you're working on this and it's going really well. And you need to expand. You need a hundred million dollars so you can expand your factory and make more of these vehicles so you can achieve your dream and you can help make the world a safer, better place. You go to your bank and the bank says to you, oof, a hundred million dollars. No, I, I don't think we're going to give you that. And so you're trying to figure out how you could get money. So you go to an investment banker and the investment banker says to you, well, you're kind of tiny. I, I don't think 
you know, maybe come back to us when you're worth a billion dollars. And so you're trying to figure out how can I get this hundred million dollars in order to expand my factory, hire new play people, add to society, help the economy, create jobs. What are you going to do? I'm Daniel Adjami. And I'm Andrew Adjami. You're listening to Financial Strategies. Today's topic is Tina is a liar. Daniel, that's a great example of what you started to talk about before our break in regard to the investments that are able to pay you money, has some volatility. And, uh, you know, you know, talk to, talk to us about how, how we, what we should be looking at when we're buying these and what these things are about. So these things are called business development companies. And, and what they do is they help medium, mid-sized, you know, business owners, in America, okay, these are these are all U.S.-based companies um, expand. And so, with the scenario, if you were the one running that that autonomous vehicle company, you would come to the business development company, and they would they would explore your factories, they would see what you're doing, they would um, look at your business plan, and they'd say, "Okay, we understand this, and we're gonna we're going to loan you money at you know eight percent." We're going to loan you money at this interest rate, but we also want some stock options in your company. So if you do make it, we're going to collect the money because we talked about an investment has to be, it has to pay you. In order to be an investment, it has to pay you. It's a speculation or it's a liability otherwise. If it's paying you, it becomes an investment, right? right. So they're going to collect that interest. They're going to collect that from you. There's a contract on X date. You know, uh, we're going to pay you this much money. And then on this date, the loan goes due and, and you're free and clear. And, the, and that company gets what they need to expand their business and grow their business, right? Build those electric or those uh, autonomous vehicles. With, with the options, they'll say, well, if you make it, then we want X amount of options. And so what that's doing is that's locking them into some of that speculation money. So you get you get the income and then you get this little bonus on the side. Whereas if this company really makes it and they make it big, you're going to be able to appreciate and that appreciation of this company changing the world, making the world a safer place. But in the meantime, you get paid in order, nice. um, in order to help them expand the business. Right. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's how a business development company operates. And there's ones that focus on different types of investment. And yeah. they're specialists. So they have teams that understand the industries they invest in. So some might invest in um, smaller companies, right? Like Main Street companies. Mm -hmm. um, and they really understand how that small business works. Yeah. Some invest in tech companies, right? right. And they've helped uh, YouTube. They've helped uh, Facebook, Pinterest. Palantir, right? They've helped some of these companies that DocuSign that you've heard of when they were small and they right. helped those companies become a reality, right? So yeah. different ones have different specialties um, that they go out and that's all they do is they look at tech companies or all they do, they look at these, these smaller mid-sized companies in America. Some work with companies that are going through, um, through refinancing or, or bankruptcy procedures and they'll be able to buy this entire company that's worth a hundred million dollars for 75 million dollars and they know that they can part that out and get the hundred million dollars right 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 so there's different ones that do different things but the 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 reason you invest in these is is because it, it they pay tremendous income right. um, they're doing a cause where they're they're helping middle America grow. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it is volatile because these aren't apples and Amazons and Facebooks of the world. These are middle market companies that struggle and, and go through times, hard, right. hard times at different times. Right. So that right. these are the most volatile thing we're going to talk about. But they have that bonus that we talked about where um, if the company does good, they get shares in the company. You collect the interest in the meantime. Nice. And how those work is, you know, let's say they invested in a company like Facebook. Yeah. When Facebook lists, 
their those those options that they have just, when they went public yeah they you know maybe they got 500 million dollars that they made from that that deal right so they pay out a special dividend to you because the way that business development companies are structured they were structured it was in the 80s that they were created and uh-huh. they were created to give people another all you know be able to let people invest in private companies right okay yeah um they have to pay out 90 percent of the income that they make to the, the shareholders so they don't get nice. they, it's not taxable to them if they do that that it, it messes up their whole structure so they're incentivized yeah to pay out all that money to their investors and so when yeah. you buy these this isn't you don't want this as your entire portfolio you just you know because Piece that could it. add some volatility, but when you mix these with some of the other things, it can give you a nice boost in income without taking on tremendous risk. Nice. All right. And, and you know, if you uh, just turned into financial strategies with Daniel and Andrew Adjmi here, we're talking about Tina's a liar. And we have a, a paper to go along with today's show, Universe of Income Generating Investments, where you can learn uh, a little bit more about what Daniel's talking about. You can learn about some of the other things that we have available uh, that are available out there, 800-725-7616, or uh, our website is uh, adjmi.com, the two words, age my dot com. Daniel, you know, when you're talking about this, you're talking about how you can get this dividend from this business development corporation, and then you get the uh, special dividend from it. So you can actually um, make money. As we said, the definition of investment is it's something that you, that, that pays you to own it. Um, And uh, you know, there's, the aspect behind these business developments, you know, corporations that when people are buying them, they have to be careful because they're what there's like 50 different ones. That's all there are. There aren't a lot of them. Right. But you don't got by all 50. There's only about probably 10 or 12 good ones. You want to buy the good one. You want to buy the ones that, that, you know, you know, tell these people, you know, if they're developing their own portfolio, what they should be looking for and the kinds of things that you look for when you're buying business development corporations. So, so th- those are some really good points because there is about 50 or 54 of these and a lot of them are garbage. Um, you want to stay away from them. They have extremely high internal fees. The management's cup, uh, teams are not experts in the fields they're looking at. And, th- and there's some good ones. And so uh, when you're investigating these, one is if you're looking at the yield. So if you're using like, I don't know, Google or or Yahoo or whatever to as you as to look at the tickers and see the dividends they're paying or whatever. Or even if you're using like a Schwab or TD Ameritrade, right? It'll tell you what the yield is, and it will be a lower yield than it's actually paying because the the yield on those platforms doesn't include the special dividends that you get. So you're gonna look at those, you're gonna be like, wow, that's a nice yield, but it's actually probably gonna be a little bit better than that because the good business development companies with the great management teams, um, the way that they designed these is so it pays a certain amount of dividends. And in order to make sure that they have all the cash to do that, they put in a supplement special dividend so they can cover their normal dividend without any problem. Because usually people think if it has a high dividend, there's a problem with the company. But that's not what's going on with these. These are made, these are specifically designed to pay out large income to investors. But then because they they get all this extra money or, or people will refinance loans faster than expected, they have this extra money that comes in and they have to pay it out to the investors. Otherwise they're taxed uh, unfavorably on that. Okay. So that's how those special dividends come in. So when you're looking at these, you want to stay away from the ETFs or the mutual funds on these because they've underperform they've they've dramatically underperformed the actual dividend stock so you think like oh i don't want to buy 500 stocks in the s p let me buy the s p index because it's yeah. low fees and it will do the same as if i buy those myself that's not how these work they they uh, have huge internal fees if you buy the the etf or the ooh. index of the bdcs and then you uh, get the garbage ones in with your good ones yeah, so it's yeah. better to pick these individually and you want to look for management teams that have amazing track records in the specific niche that they're in right you don't want a master of all right or uh uh someone that Check tries to be a master yeah. of all right yeah you want somebody that 
is very specific and knows exactly what they're doing in that particular industry that they're investing in. Uh, and then you want a management team that believes enough in those companies that they are buying, that they own tremendous amounts of their own stock, right? So if you see the CFO, the CEO, you see the, the top brass in the company <clears throat> buying up, especially on dips, buying up their own stocks, right? Um, buying up the BDCs, that's a good. So, so the top tier ones of these, um, the management owns huge amounts of their own stock. And another thing to watch out for is the internal fees. Okay. So there's some have very large internal fees and, and they charge it on all the assets and other ones will have a tier set up specifically designed. So you get that 8% or so of income, and then they get a bonus after they clear that hurdle. So once you make their, your money, then they get a little bonus um, to compensate them for doing a good job. Excellent, excellent. Business Development Corporations, one of the alternatives that prove that Tina, there is no alternative, is a liar. And uh, we have, you've been listening to Financial Strategies, Andrew Daniel Ajme today. Uh, we're talking about Tina as a liar, and we have a book to give to you, Return on Principle, that will give you some more um, education in regard to these things, be able to have a stress-free retirement. Uh, that We don't uh, make anything off this book. This is a book that we uh, pay money for, that we'd love to put in your hand just to help educate you so that you can know what you don't know. And uh, you can have that by calling 800-725-7616, and we'll be right back after this. History tells us the market goes up and the market goes down. What would you do if you lost half of your retirement savings? It's time to make the shift to steady, reliable retirement income. And where do you go? The Retirement Income Store. Log on to agerme.com for your free retirement review. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. The Retirement Income Store, where retirees go for income. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Ajami in Connecticut and Daniel Ajami in Colorado. Dad, I heard a good story the other day. Uh, it was somebody explaining the monetary system, right? Explaining how an economy works. Some people probably been out of their, uh, haven't been to an economics class in a long time. So we'll do a, a super simple one. Okay. Um, imagine an economy that has uh, 10 houses and $10. Anyone can exchange their dollar for a house okay. and anyone can exchange their house for a dollar. Your dollar is a perfect store in value because it doesn't change. It's $1 and you can buy a house. So your purchasing power is always the same. Now, no one really appreciates because everything stays the same, but that's okay because you have a good quality of life. Everyone can afford a house or you can put, take your money out of your house, put it into your dollar and keep a store value for whenever you want to use that money. Now, imagine if somebody changes the rules and one of those 10 participants is able to create money. And so they go and they print another $10. So now there's 10 houses and $20. So I come to you and I say, Andrew, let me sell you my house and you say, okay, I'll give you a dollar. So I'm happy because I got a dollar for the house. And I know that that dollar will be able to buy me another house in the future. And then you go to Joe down the street and you say, Joe, let me buy your house for a dollar fifty. And Joe's really happy because no one's ever sold a house for a dollar fifty before. So he sells you the house for a dollar fifty. And then everyone finds out that houses aren't worth a dollar anymore. They're worth $2. So who is the one that lost in that deal? The homeowners. The person who them. has, no, yeah. the homeowners kept their purchasing power. They all have $2. It's the people who, the savers, the people with cash, right? The person with a dollar will never be able to buy a house now because houses cost $2. Yeah. It would have been easy, better to buy it when they had it. Yeah, when it was I, one. 
And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about money debasement. I'm Daniel Adjami. And I'm Andrew Adjami. You're listening to Financial Strategies because people don't know what people don't know. Today's topic is Tina is a liar. A lot of people are saying there is no alternative. We're talking about the alternatives today. Daniel has uh, already gone through uh, specifically specifics on business development corporations. And now, now we're talking about isn't this go along with international securities, right? Because international securities are going to be able to allow us to diversify in a fashion and in industries that where that debasement of money that you're talking about, Daniel, because the U.S. is is one of the primary uh, people that are debasing that money, um, is going to allow us to be able to participate in uh, industries and places that actually benefit from that, Correct. Yeah. So when, when Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1970, in the 1970s, um, it started stealing money from savers. Right. And that's what that analogy was supposed to explain is how when you, when one person's allowed to create more money, people who own assets, which are typically the rich, benefit from that because they appreciate, but they're not really appreciating. They're keeping the purchasing power. What's right. actually happening is the thing you're measuring it in that case, the dollar is going down in value. And so these, these international dividend stocks we're talking about give you a broad, via, uh, a broad spectrum of industries and regions around the world. And they're denominated in multiple currencies. And so what you can do is if, if your assets stayed the same, the, the same value, right? but countries continue to debase their currencies, create money out of nothing, and, and the purchasing power is going down of those dollars. You don't notice it because it happens slow. But if you think back and you say, well, you used to be able to buy a car for $5,000, a brand new car for $5,000. Why does it cost Fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars now. Did cars go up, or did the thing you're measuring it go and go down? The thing that you're measuring went down. Yeah. So, so these pay you to own them because we talked about investments need to pay you yeah. to qualify as an investment. It needs to pay you, so they pay you, but they benefit from countries debasing their currencies or, or countries creating more money. So they pay you dividends or an interest and they pay even more as, as these countries' uh, monies debase. Is that the right idea? Yeah, you get you as a, an owner participate in these companies that are in growing prosperous um, ventures and, and, and businesses. You get to participate you own a right to the income streams they're creating. Nice. Very so nice. they pay that through dividends and they also pay that through, you know, you get appreciation over time from those businesses doing well. So if that be healthcare or trading companies, that be commodity rated companies, but you're getting, you're getting a, a company that's creating huge amounts of cash flow of cash streams for a good price compared to if you if you look at companies right now in the US you're paying high multiples yeah, mind blowingly high multiples for that little claim on the company and so it's a different way of it's a different way of being able to participate in income streams and protect yourself from debasement at the same time so you can you you combine business development corporations and international securities, along with some of these other alternatives that we're talking about today, to be able to put together a portfolio to generate interest and dividends so that, so that people can get paid from their investments. And then that, why that's so important is in retirement, you need a paycheck. And this is where the paycheck can come from, the div dividends and interest from these investments, rather than having to spend down your principal, rather than have to have to sell investments to create money at retirement. Um, you know, if uh, you just uh, tuned in, you're listening to Financial Strategies, I think you're Daniel Adge, I mean, we have a, a paper that we would like to give you, a, 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 um, a commission report called The Dangers of Spending Down Principal During Retirement. So uh, you can actually run out of money when you're spending down your principal and you want to live off the interest and off the dividends rather than off the principal. We'd like to put this paper in your hand if you like. Call 800-725-7616. We'd like to educate you, help you 
to know what you don't know. And uh, that's what makes us uh, so much different. We're, we're big in education and helping people to understand. So, um, Daniel, when you're talking about these international securities, how they can fit into a portfolio along with the business, business development corporations, uh, is there something more along the lines in regard to these international securities that's significant for the people in our audience to be able to understand? Or, or you know, do we talk about the next one as we're uh, quickly running out of time today? When you're looking at asset allocation, it's really important to have a negative correlation, right? So if everything is the same correlation, when markets go up, everything goes up. And when markets go down, everything goes down. Um, That's a pretty difficult thing to stomach. And we've had tons of people become clients in those situations where their advisor had everything correlated and then their stock portfolios dropped or their mutual funds portfolios dropped tremendously. And they were like, I thought I was, I thought I was moderate. I thought I was conservative. And I just like my portfolio went down this tremendous amount because everything was correlated and because they're retiring and they need income, but they're not, they're, they're invested in the S and P a hoping for hope for a hope for a, a price appreciation, <laughs> right? It doesn't make any sense. Like, nope. Let your let your investments pay you. You worked for that money. Now let your money pay you. Exactly. Um, so, because of the Tina, right? Because there's no alternative. There's just everything goes in one, or it's mutual funds of everything, and so they all become <laughs> kind of correlated, right? Yeah, definitely. And so when you're talking about these individual um, international stocks, because they're all in different countries, and countries have different regions, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it can have negative correlation. So like if the market's down, some of these stocks could actually be up those days because um, they're actually, you know, they trade on the US exchange, but through a American depository receipt, as opposed to being on like the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So so that uh, can really help. And, and that's the idea behind diversification. That's why you want if you have the proper diversification, you're going to have that, uh, what did you call it? Negative um, correlation. correlation, right? Because some things are doing good and some things are doing badly or or maybe not as good as other ones. But then, you know, that's that's good so that if the market is going down, let's just say, and you have things that are going up when the market's going down or you're still getting paid when the market's going down, that puts you in a, in a very nice uh, situation. So that's, that's, that sounds like a key thing in developing a portfolio. And I think our, our uh, listening audience like to know that. And, you know, if you uh, have just turned, tuned in to us, you're listening to Financial Strategies, and uh, we have a book that we'd like to give you to help educate you on these things that we're talking about today, how you can have a stress-free retirement, Return on Principle by David Scranton. This is a book that we think would help you uh, to be able to understand some things that you may not understand right now, uh, help you know what you don't know, and be able to put you in a better position in planning your retirement so that it can be stress-free. And if you like that book, just call us at 800-725-7616 and ask for the book. All right. And we um, will look forward to uh, coming back after we take a brief, brief break. And we'll be right back after this. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, Are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Daniel, I was talking to Sue, our client Susan the other day, and she was uh, talking to me about. Hey, Susan's eighty-one years old, and and uh, she said, Andrew, you know, I, you know, I, I sure would like to be able to have some more money, but I'm afraid I'm going to run out of money. I said, Susan, we got you covered. That's not an issue here. We've got your money, and it's diversified into a variety of different and alternative investments that are paying you. They're true investments because they're paying you, and so. Um, I can get you $500 a month more. And I showed Susan how she could have $500, $500 a month more and got her set up for that. And she was just 
elated at the fact that her investments are paying her and she doesn't have to she doesn't have to worry about running out of money in her lifetime. I am Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Now, that's the coolest thing when um, people have made that change from the Wall Street model of just, you know, hope over time markets continue to do what they've done and you'll be okay to let your money go into this account, work for you, generate an income stream for you that you can use when you want. If you don't want to, it builds up and it grows for you. You want to go up, spend some more money because you're 81 years old and you deserve to. Well, your, your accounts are just pumping out that money. It's just the button you turn on and turn the faucet on and the money comes coming out to you. That's great. Exactly. I love telling my clients to uh, spend their money. I'd rather have them spend it than their kids spend it. I know their kids are going to spend it. Just like the sign I saw in the travel agency that said, if you don't think you have the money to travel first class, your kids will. (laughs) And so I love to have them spend it instead. And, you know, Daniel, when we're talking about the alternatives, Tina is a liar. There's alternatives other than the stock market. And you already talked about business development corporations, you talked about international securities and how people can buy those. Um, And, uh, you know, with these things, one thing we didn't mention with that is that we have to be careful about sometimes people are looking just at the dividends and seeing these high dividends, they buy it for that, but it actually is a junk thing. And that's where we have to be careful with that. But, um, you know, as we're talking about these, we're going from the most aggressive to the most conservative here. And we got conservative things. If you're uh, just tuned in, you're you're listening and you, you're a conservative person. Well, hang on. We got some some conservative stuff to where you can't lose um, any principle in regard to that. These things Daniel's been talking about so far have a little bit of have some volatility of various sorts to them. But Daniel, what's next on the list as we go from the most most aggressive within the income alternatives here um, in this that? So the, the next thing would be sovereign debt and and what sovereign debt would be is um it's a country right and and they want to um they want to build something new right they want to build a new park or they want to build you know they they spent a little bit too much money last year they didn't get enough tax receipts and so they need to you know pay their payroll and so they issue debt and instead of if you buy, say, the U.S. government's 10-year, maybe you get a, a percent and a quarter, percent and a half fluctuates. Uh, maybe you could get, you know, three to five and a half percent um, on sovereign debt. And so the way you, you can't really buy these, we love buying individual securities so you You can do the research and you can see the financials behind the company. You can see the cash coming into the company and you know if this is a good investment. But it's very difficult for for smaller investors to be able to to buy these individually. And it it can be dangerous because if you have a country country like Argentina, right, they've defaulted a few times on their debt, you really want to buy a big portion of their debt. So the way you participate these is through some ETFs that have very low internal fees and it'll buy you a basket. So maybe the largest amount of any one country you have is a percent and a half or something like that. And you get diversified through all these different uh, sovereign countries, right? And you get their debt and then it, it pays you an interest in dividend again. And these, um, These work really well because you get that international exposure again. So you're not just all in the U.S. dollar denominated debt. Um, And when these countries do well, you can actually get appreciation in the bonds. But these things just sit. They're solid, right? They just sit there and they they kind of don't fluctuate at all. They just pay you the dividends, right? These are on the safer side of the things. Yeah. Um, and that's that's sovereign debt or government debt, right? And that's throughout the world again. And those things work real well um, for a portion. Everything is a portion, right? This is an yeah. asset allocation. You need to have diversification through that's all right. these all these different types of things because um, we talked about correlation, and these typically have extremely low correlation to markets. And 
what's so cool about that is you're always getting paid. So if you have a lower correlation, that means your volatility is lower, but you're always getting paid. So you don't have to, people like, people like high beta investments because they want to see their number go up. But right. you don't have to worry about that anymore because you know your portfolio is generating you this much every year. Then it doesn't matter if hope the number goes up, right? Because you know you got the income you need and anything on top of that is icing on the cake. Yeah, this is the interest and dividend model, the idea of living off of your interest rather than living off of your principal. It's a very key point in retirement. That's how people can, uh, that's the number one mistake retirees make. They don't change their, their investments to an income model to get live off of it. And so they end up running out of the money or you can run out of money where this way you don't. And if you do this early enough, uh, prior to your investment, you can actually compound and snowball that money so that your investments can actually just make even more dividends and interest. And if you don't need it, well, we reinvest that and we get even more. So it's it's a really beautiful thing that takes a little bit of time to compound. And that's why you know we're giving away uh, this paper today, this commission report called The Dangers of Spending Down Principal During Retirement. We don't want you and our listening audience to spend down principle. We want you to live off the interest, live off the dividends. Uh, many of you probably had parents that taught you live off the, live off, live off the interest, not off the principle. We'd love to put this uh, paper in your hand. Um, the dangers of spending down principle during retirement. So we we'll, um, can have that by calling 800-725-7616. Uh, Daniel, uh, you know, we are fast running out of time here. We have a few minutes left in the show today. I'm thinking we might need to take this uh, Tina is a liar and do a part two uh, for next week because we still have so many other things we want to talk, talk to people about regarding um, the alternatives. But, uh, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that front? Well, there's only two left. And, you know, the preferred stocks we've gone over a lot of times on different shows. So I think I think people have a, a good idea how those work. I guess we could do a special one for those sometime if people if people want to hear more about the preferreds. But you know that's a typically tax advantage way of getting income. Um, a lot of them will pay you qualified dividends, and um, on those things you can generate somewhere between three percent, you know, to six percent, depending on how you're able to buy these things. They have big coupons, but with yield to maturity, you may not get the full thing. But the, the deal is, you know, you're going to invest X amount and you know, on X date, you're going to get your money back. And in between, you're going to collect contract. all the dividends and interest. Nice. And that's why that's the next on the, you know, okay. lowest risk okay. scale. Okay. All right. So you get contracts that, 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 that you know when they're going to pay you and what they're going to pay you. Great. Okay. Uh, and what's after that? And then there are fixed annuities, right? And so, this is like an alternative to having money in the bank. So if you put money in the bank, um, maybe if you're lucky, you earn 1%, and then you pay 25 to 40% of that 1% to taxes. So you end up with, you know, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.75%, um, right? Yeah, right. Um, whereas these... Fixed annuities are for a time frame like a CD where you you have a contract, say five years, and in the end of five years, you get your principal pack. And okay. in the meantime, maybe you can make somewhere between two and a half percent to just under three okay. percent a year. Uh -huh, nice. And it's tax deferred. So if you made three percent, mm -hmm. um, you made three hundred dollars, guess how much? starts compounding for you, $300. You didn't have to pay tax um, on that $300 you made. You get to defer it to later. And so your money is really working for you, right? Your money is working for you. And then your dividend money is working for you. And then your dividends, dividends monies are working for you. And it starts compounding. And you're sitting back three years later, looking at the money, how it's compounding, because time just goes when you're having fun, right? And this allows you to have fun and not have to worry about watching that basket, watching your money. Right, right. Excellent. That's, you know, I, I call that the insurance company's version of a bank CD. And, uh, you know, it's 
called fixed annuity because the interest rate is fixed and the and the principal is fixed that you can't lose that. So that's a great idea. And you know, I've seen people getting six, seven thousand dollars on their tax return of interest from money that's been in the bank. That that's a way that they would not, if they put that in there, uh, you would not be being taxed on that. So that would save you a significant, like Daniel's talking about. In and and to you'd taxes. be making multiples of what they're yeah. making in the bank. So that six or seven thousand would probably turn into you know, 21 or yeah, $28,000. Right. 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 Exactly. And then there, of course, there's the, the, the fixed index annuity it goes up when the market goes up, but doesn't come down when the market comes down. And, you know, we talked about that in shows uh, previously as well. So there are various alternatives uh, to the stock market. And uh, Tina says, you know, T, you know, there is no alternative. T is, Right. And uh, Tina is a liar because there are alternatives. And hopefully if uh, you know that as you listen to the show today, you can be able to understand that. And, uh, you know, to be able to understand it a little bit more, we'd like to help educate you further with the book Return on Principle. Um, and this will be able to give you some insights uh, to be able to help you know what you don't know so that you can have a stress free retirement. So um, we're glad to be able to come to you today. You've been listening to Financial Strategies. And your Daniel Ladjman. Today's topic's been Tina is a liar. And if you like this book, call 800 725 7616, return on principle. And until next time, you too can have a stress free retirement. 